Round 18, the Mexican Grand Prix, won by Lewis Hamilton, but there was plenty of drama for Max Verstappen, and that's where we'll start, and we'll start on Saturday, where it really unfolded for him. Verstappen, Red Bull finally with the quickest car again. First time since Budapest where he was on pole, and this time he should have had pole position as well. But Valtteri Bottas crashing at the end of qualifying really was the beginning of the end for Verstappen. It shouldn't have been, because he should have backed off for the yellow flags, but he kept his foot in and that's an obvious penalty. You can't do that, three place pen penalty, not a happy Dutchman, but that's the rules. So starting fourth place, probably some red mist, I'm sure some red mist for, uh, for Max Verstappen at the start of the Grand Prix. And uh, let's see what happened then for him down at turn one because it was about to get a bit worse. Onto the brakes, he's just slightly ahead of Hamilton, but Hamilton's going around the outside and Verstappen just runs into him ever so slightly. Then Verstappen, can't turn in to turn two because Hamilton's had a big slide. That forces him wide. He has a think about trying to turn in a couple of times, but can't do it. Has a small touch with Hamilton there as well, but has to uh, bounce over the grass, rejoin in ninth position, and um, has plenty more work to do then. So should have been on pole, then was fourth, then was ninth, and uh, had to make a bit of a recovery pretty quickly. If we see that start then on board with Lewis Hamilton, he's coming around the outside of Verstappen into turn one and uh, just gets a small tap from Verstappen really slightly, but then Hamilton just has a slide, and I think Hamilton has this slide on his own, not because of Verstappen's touch. If we go to the outside shot, then I think we can see more clearly why Hamilton had the slide. Verstappen ahead, doesn't break too late. Hamilton sees an opportunity, goes around the outside. Then Verstappen first gets, a, gets his own slide on and just kisses the right rear of, uh, of Hamilton just by the floor and does a bit of damage. But at this point, Hamilton's okay. Then he, his trajectory takes him over the white line, just onto the green painted stuff. And as his front left comes back on, grips up, the rear left is still on the, uh, on the green paint. And that seems to be the exact moment where he gets the big oversteer. So all in all, scrappy, good hard racing, but didn't pay off for, uh, for either Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton there. So Verstappen then, he's now cleared Daniel Kvyat's Torre Rosso very quickly and he's onto the back of Valtteri Bottas who's being held up behind the McLaren of Lando Norris and um, he goes for a move and this one is about to get bad to worse to even worse for Verstappen because he, uh, he goes for it inside of turn 13 and um, just gets a puncture. For me, he's so unlucky with this one. So coming into turn 12, Bottas actually makes a small mistake. He misses the apex slightly and um, understeers towards the exit kerb and gets right on, up on it. He's got really bad momentum coming out towards the, the hairpin of turn 13, really slow corner. And he goes back towards the right hand side to prepare as you would on the racing line. But he's not anticipated Verstappen there with a bit of aggression in him. And uh, Verstappen has the whole width of the track, it just sends one up the inside, really good old school lunge, makes the apex nicely and goes through ahead. But if we go on board with Bottas, we can see he's left the, the whole space open on the left. He's turned in, suddenly he sees Verstappen, turns hard right and away. Top on rear tire. Looks like a bright rear puncher, Max. Bright rear puncher, look out. For me, this is actually a mistake from Bottas and he's very lucky to get away with this. He's initially seen Verstappen, but then he's just misjudged the, uh, the length of Verstappen's car. He's not forced wide at all. He can't take the apex because there's a red, red bull there, but that's the exact nature of an overtake in a race. I think Bottas is lucky here, Verstappen's unlucky. In another, in another collision like this, Verstappen wouldn't get a puncture and Bottas would get front wing damage and he'd be the one coming into the pit. And this one, he was now to the back of the field and a whole lap on three wheels as well, so he lost a lot of time. So when he came out of the pits, Verstappen was 60 seconds behind the race leader, Charles Leclerc. And uh, what was impressive to me is at the end of the race, he was still about 60 seconds to Charles Leclerc, who was now fourth place, having taken a couple of pit stops. One huge 67 lap stint on a hard tire. Really impressive for Verstappen to keep the tire alive, to keep the pace going. Really aggressive overtakes was how he partly did that. And one overtake in particular was a little bit too close for comfort, and that was on Kevin Magnussen. So Magnussen's in his own fight with Pierre Gasly in the Toro Rosso just ahead, and Verstappen really just sticks a tentative nose down the inside of turn four. This one's not really committed enough and a bit half-hearted and he just clips Kevin Magnussen and um, sends Magnussen into a bit of a slide and uh, Verstappen then goes around the outside of him off the track at turn five. We just turned in on me. 
this one he was actually lucky on, Max Verstappen, because he could have done the front wing on this occasion, just a bit half-hearted, and Magnussen not probably expecting the Red Bull there, thinking just about the Toro Rosso ahead, um, just continued to turn in, and he wasn't really far enough alongside there. All in all, good recovery drive from Verstappen, sixth place, could have been the win though. And that's the, uh, that's the main thing for him, Red Bull car quick, and uh, that pole position, that mistake, I think that will all come back to haunt him after the Mexican race. So that's Verstappen from the start to the finish, but at the start of the Grand Prix, there was a really, really tight moment between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. Vettel started second, Hamilton started third, and the Ferrari man was obviously very keen to keep the Mercedes behind at the start. For me, a little bit too keen. On board with Hamilton, gets a good drive, and is already alongside Vettel. Now Vettel keeps coming across, Hamilton's got a significant portion of his car alongside. Hamilton's now two wheels on the grass, and if I pause it there, he is millimetres from hitting the left rear of Sebastian Vettel with his front right. This is high speed, off the line already, and Hamilton's two wheels on the grass, he's so close to just hitting the, uh, the rear of Sebastian Vettel, and that's because Vettel's basically put him on the grass here, so for me, not very fair racing and quite dangerous racing from Sebastian Vettel and we can see his point of view now as Charles Leclerc gets a slightly better start Vettel moves straight to the left and has a look in the mirror then keeps coming across has another look and then keeps his car pretty much in a straight line doesn't really move to give Hamilton any room Hamilton has to back out and that's then alleviates the pressure on Vettel he can go and attack his teammate down to turn one now Vettel said after the race he didn't see Hamilton there the oldest excuse in the book you've got to be looking if you're moving from the right hand side of the track all the way to the left you've got to be aware that there might be a car on your on your left hand side on top of that he didn't get a great start so for me that's not an acceptable excuse if you can't see then then that's probably pretty dangerous to have someone out there that's not looking in the mirrors at the start of the Grand Prix like that and um, for Hamilton this isn't the first time he's had a big squeeze at the start of the Grand Prix back in Belgium 2012 and there was a big crash on board with Hamilton and uh, Roman Grosjean is the aggressor this time he's come from the left hand side of the track straight to the right so he's quite similar in that way and Hamilton's got a really similar portion of the car alongside he's just got the left front alongside the right rear Hamilton doesn't even take to the grass this time he stands his ground and there's contact left front to right rear that was so close to happening in Mexico as well and we all know the outcome of this one Hamilton into Grosjean into Alonso and there's a huge pile up and Roman Grosjean got a race ban for that one. It was a culmination of a lot of first lap incidents for him but nonetheless it was a serious offence this one and not that dissimilar to what Sebastian Vettel did as well so I'm not calling for a race ban for Sebastian Vettel but I was surprised that the stewards didn't look into that one any further because for me not fair to put a driver on the grass on a straight line and a little bit dangerous as well. If Vettel had have been touched by Hamilton at the start we could have had a car broadside in front of 17 other cars at flat out racing speed on a straight. One of them was short to hit. So strange, but um, either way, they both got away with it. So um, live to fight another day. So for Hamilton, he carried on to turn one where he had a little um, touch with Verstappen and a bit of grass tracking. Got away with that one as well. For Vettel, he carried on up to turn four and five where he also had a bit of a, uh, a run in and this time with his teammate Charles Leclerc. Now Leclerc is busy on cold tyres looking in the mirror heading into turn four and seems to just catch himself out. He's under no pressure from Vettel but has a lock up left front and he runs very wide as well and uh, he's tight now for turn five. He's in a really bad position and Vettel's right over to the left hand side prepared the corner and he can get a much better exit and uh, he does get a better exit but sadly his teammate's still there just ahead. So in this situation, Leclerc, he's anticipated Vettel trying to get a switch back on him and he's just held it at the apex to make sure that he doesn't run wide and just allow Vettel to come through on the inside. And Vettel's not anticipated this and they've just touched. Somehow they've got away with this one and this would have been a really big blot on, on the, the copybook of both Ferrari drivers really, but particularly Sebastian Vettel for running into the back of his teammate. It's the front wing, just hits the uh, the right rear tyre of Charles Leclerc. And um, we've had this before as well with, with Sebastian Vettel in Mexico, 2017. He touched both Max Verstappen at turn two and then Lewis Hamilton at turn three, broke his front wing in the process and gave Hamilton a puncture. So that shows the danger that was out there for Vettel's just innocuous touch really on the back of Leclerc. But both Ferraris carried on and uh, remained one-two in the early stages of the race. 
pitting Leclerc really was the one that gave it away. He gave up their really strong position at 1-2. A lone Ferrari at the front against two Mercedes is always dangerous and it proved again. This time Hamilton clung on to the win. But I think the damage to Lewis Hamilton's car from that earlier touch with Verstappen, driving around that with the tyres as well was particularly impressive because he would have lost a bit of rear downforce, more likely to slide on the car and um, keeping it all neat for, for all those laps on the hard tyre under pressure from Vettel. Vettel never got too close, but any mistake from Hamilton would have given him the sniff and uh, he didn't make any, any, any one a good race. And talking of a good race, Sergio Perez. The uh, local man, the Mexican crowd, absolutely loving him and loving his race as well. Seventh place, best of the rest. And uh, started with some good bit of attacking on the medium tyre, much preferable to the Toro Rosso's and the McLaren's that started on the soft. Perez then had better pace in the early stages as the soft runners dropped and he made a nice pass on uh, Daniel Kvyat on the inside of turn one. Kvyat came across, tried to defend it but really there was nothing he could do. Perez was through and uh, then he just got his head down, really strong pace until the other man that went really long, Daniel Ricciardo was on his tail in the closing stages. Ricciardo started on the hard tyre, he had really good pace at the end on the medium as well, much fresher tyres and it seemed like the Mexican crowd were going to have to hope that, uh, that Sergio could find something in the closing stages. But actually this one, Ricardo had only really one attempt down at turn one and it was a big lunge. And as soon as he started to turn the wheel slightly right, he just locked the right front solid. And from there, no chance to make the corner. So uh, one of the classic Ricardo lunges, but this one not even close to coming off. He bounced across the grass, bit of good rally cross skill to get it back on at turn three. Didn't lose too much time. In fact, gain time and had to give Perez the place back, but just way too much speed. And uh, that was the end of his hopes, really, of getting seventh place. But still, eighth place for Ricardo was a good effort. Of course, these two teams in a bit of a battle as well after the protest from Japan, Renault losing their points. Ricardo would have loved to beat Perez, but this time, not quite happening. His teammate Nico Hülkenberg also made a point, but it was only after the race with a 10 second penalty coming for Daniel Kvyat, who tried one of the most overzealous overtakes that I can remember seeing into turn 16 again. Don't know if I've seen a pass there before. And on board with Hulkenberg first, we can see into turn 13, he's already looking in the mirrors a lot. He's worried about Daniel Kvyat, and then has a big snap of oversteer just at the apex, which allows Kvyat then the chance to come through. If we look at it from Kvyat's point of view, you can see that just puts Hulkenberg offline. He gets a chance and has a look into turn 16, but he's not even alongside coming into the corner. Barely a braking zone really at 16 as well. He shot the door, at last corner. Shut the door. Actually does pretty well, Hulkenberg, to get it back over the line within 10 seconds of Kvyat. Hits the wall quite hard, rips off the rear wing. Kvyat continues, but no complaints there. That was uh, pretty much a slam dunk, 10 second penalty. Uh, and a shame for him because actually he had a good race. So there we go, action from start to finish. A good win for Hamilton and that puts him right on the brink of a sixth world title. Anything other than a win for Bottas next week in Austin and he's got it wrapped up. Hamilton's always been good there and he only needs an 8th place finish to do it. So I'm sure he's looking forward to the celebrations already.